Hello and welcome to our outdoor kitchen today, Yay. Mrs. Farmer. You know what? It was so nice today. It finally is nice. So nice today. And I thought, you know what? Why don't we bring everything outside? Now, the lighting's not perfect, but you know, we have been all around this world. We have. And there are many places that we've looked at and think, it'd be nice to live here, uh -huh. but they don't have seasons. That's right. The tropical areas, who could stand having one season? I like seasons. That's why we're in Kentucky and that's why we'll always stay here. So anyway, what's been going on around the farm? You know what we miss? We had the grandkids over. We did. And the grandkids enjoyed the animals. They always do. And so I'm starting to thinking, we've got the brand new grandbaby, uh -huh. who this spring, he's really becoming aware of things. Yeah. Won't it be fun to let them play with the little lambs? Oh yeah, he would love that. So we missed liming season last year. We decided to let it go a year. Right. So we started talking about the liming season. Uh -huh. And we started thinking about bringing a ram in. So we started thinking about renting a ram. You can right. rent a ram. Yes, you can. It's possible. So we decided to reach out and we found somebody who brought us in. He looks more like an African lion he than does. a ram. He is something else. He's, so almost, let's, he's as big as Milton. He is huge. <laughs> he's huge. He's over 300 pounds. I know he's big. he's big. And he's kind of, I don't know if I'd want to go in there and turn my back on him. He makes me nervous. You know, he'll, they'll butt you. Yeah. So be careful. I will. I'm staying out of the fence. So anyhow, let's talk about renting a ram and having some lambs. That's right. It goes hand in hand, ma'am. <laughs> How about that? Bobby Grider. Nice to meet you. From Stable Rock. Stable Rock the Toddens. Now, I needed to rent a ram. Uh-huh. And we talked on the phone. You said, hey, I think I can hook you up. Then you brought this majestic creature in. <laughs> if he had if he had big horns on him, he'd look like something that lived in the mountains. Right, right. What's his name? His name is High Country. High Country. Yeah. So just the basic principle of this whole thing is he's a good looking specimen. He is. You say my ewes are good looking specimens? Your ewes are good. So what's that mean? What am I hoping for? I think you'll have a good lamb crop come next uh, April or so. Now, the, the basic thing that we're looking for is uh, what do you want when you have when you have a lamb? If you, if you, uh, just the deal is we're right. going to eat these lambs. Right. Well, what you're really looking for is a length of the loin, if right. possible. And if you're looking at the rear of the, of the sheep, if you're wanting something to keep for breeding or whatever to improve your breed stock, if you look at the back of the sheep facing toward the front of the sheep, it needs to be the same width from front to back. And as the wider, the better. That gives you a little bit more of an eye on your loin. Gotcha. And then uh, the rear quarters, if you can have uh, more meat farther down the leg toward the hock, that's just more meat that winds up on the table for you. Now, you and I were talking earlier on the phone. Right. And I think we're kind of behind the rest of the world. All over the world, people are eating goat and sheep. Exactly. They are the most easily digestible red meat that there is. That's correct. They're low in fat, they're good for you. T tell me about why they're good for you. Well, they're high in omega fats, which that's what you want. They're, they rate not as well as fish, but they're up there, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and of course your beef is still your red meat, prior, priority red meat. But the lamb is, it's taking its foothold. But right now in the U.S., uh, the figures are we're only raising, we're only producing one third of what this country is consuming. A lot we're, of it's coming from New Zealand. We're still importing 66% or more of the lamb that we eat every day in America. Now what made you make the switch? What, what even possessed you to even think about going in the sheep in route? In the sheep business. Well, like I said, I was born and raised on a farm. Right. And got up to about 40 year old and uh, directions went another way with me, you know, and I thought, well, I'll never farm again. So sold some acres, tractors and all this. Went up the road and bought 15 acres Sat there a little while and I thought, you just can't get the farm out of the, out of the boy. And I knew with 15 acres, I'd need to find something that would work in well. And I got to spotting these hair sheep. So about 10 years ago, I started in and uh, we've started with 10 ewes and now we got 50. We got about five males. We got, we've got sheep in six or seven states now. This animal's in demand. Right. A anything that's in demand is easy to sell. Right. 
we've been selling out six and eight and 10 months prior to have even been born. Wow. So that's a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good problem to have. So let's tell folks what we're gonna do. Okay. We brought him in here. Yeah. It's almost October. Right. How long does it take? It takes from the time that 147 days. They have their date. Yeah, basically uh, five months. About five months. So what we're planning on doing, we don't want January babies. No, you wouldn't. Not we in don't your situation. want no. February babies. No. So what we're going to do is wait to about mid-October, something like that. Right. And they can talk across the fence, have a long-distance relationship, yep. you know, yep. and then turn them in Get together. Acquainted. And then when, when the lambs are born, then the ewes should be able to make uh, great use out of your pasture, mm -hmm. just like some people breed their cows to, to calve in the spring. So the, the expense of the ewe is down because they can utilize right. what's natural, the grass. And they do well on grass. Believe it or not, that's, that's a huge field over there. There's, it's usually just absolutely lush and green, right. as is this, and look at it. Yeah. But we got the movable fence too, so we can move them out right. here and move around right. here. So I we use got a lot, lot of movable fence. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, electric netting. But I thank you very much, man, and I'm hey, looking forward to uh, when this thing starts going, I'm gonna call you back when you yes, pick sir. him up and we'll tell you how everything went and then you kind of let us know if everything looks good to you. That will be fine, looking forward to it. All right, and I'm looking forward to about March. Yeah. Late March. Yeah, it'll thank be you, man. exciting, thank you. So, we got our fence put up. That's right, good fence now. That will keep a ram in. That's right. Separate. Keep the babies in. Exactly. There's a reason now that he's not with the girls yet, and that is. Right, we gotta keep them, we don't want babies too early. Exactly, we right. don't wanna have, you can control this, believe right. it or not. So we have our little barn in there, when they mm -hmm. start getting close, mm -hmm. we know the signs right. are there. So we can put them in there, mm -hmm. keep them in there with their babies. Right. Now what happens when they all start dropping babies at the same time? Sometimes the lambs get confused, right. they'll run, run from milkweed to myrtle, they're both white. Right. Don't you know, know who their mom they is. They don't know who the mom is, who and the they have to have right. that bonding time in the barn. Right in their separate quarters. For a couple days. Yeah. So we're going to put him in mid-October okay. to November. Gives five months. March. That's what we're going to see. So then you see the lambs, you think, oh, how do they eat them? That's called farming. Right. When you eat a hamburger, a cow raised a calf. Right. Lamb is the most healthy red meat. It's the most easily digestible. The Delicious. fat is low. The omega fats are there. It's the good fat. Right. We love lamb. We are not gonna apologize for farming. That's what we do. That's what people have done for centuries. Right. And we're gonna keep rolling that way. We're gonna do a lamb recipe today. Now if I hearken back to my friend, Raul, who was all about the sauces right. and the spices and the herbs, I want today to be a special day for our viewers out there. You know what today is? If you're one of those people out there you're not. Okay. You're a wonderful cook. <laughs> but we hear people say all the time, I can't cook. Yeah. They say, that's why we like to watch you, because I can't cook. Yes, you can. Let today be the day that you get up and you're inspired to do your own thing. Right. What if you fail? The most spectacular failures are the best way to learn, because you that's remember right. that. If you do something really bad, right. if you burn something, if you mess something up, you're going to remember that. That's the best thing you can do. If you're afraid to fail, don't worry about it. Fail. Learn from that. Right? That's right. I agree. So get up. Let's cook. <laughs> what do you think, Ms. Farmer? I'm starving, yes. All right. Now, what are we going to do? Let's talk about Raul. He had a sauce, a seasoning for everything. So, Mrs. Farmer, if I can get you to bust out three cloves out of there, we're going to make a basil pesto, a homemade basil pesto. Now, you can vary from this depending on what you like or don't like. Now, we went up beside the house. Right. Where you bought your old antique racks. I love my little rack. And you just, mm -hmm. we put our spices right there. We're going to start with our basil. We're going to drop that in here. Three quarters of a cup of basil. And we're going to put a little bit of rosemary in here. A tablespoon or two of rosemary. Now this is good for lamb. This is good for chicken. If you want to make a, what they call a margarita pizza. Yeah. Um, this is perfect for a pizza sauce. Oh man. Yeah. It's making me hungry. It smells good. Look at that pizza oven sitting over there. You know, we haven't done anything with that. And I'm going to take a little bit of spinach just for a filler. And we're just going to take some mixed nuts. Now, a lot of people use pine nuts. I'm going to use just a little bit of hazelnut and some pistachios, pecan, maybe some yeah. almonds. I'm also going to come in with some cheese. So if you look, if you look at your store-bought basil pesto, what are you going to find? You're going to find milk products. You're going to say, okay, why is that in the basil pesto? Because it's your cheese. Yeah. We're going to drop in garlic cloves along with our cheese. 
And as we get this mixed up a little bit better, chop up the dry stuff first. I'm going to put a little dry oregano because our oregano was pretty much done. Let's go ahead and start Ready? chopping that up. Mix up your dry ingredients, the nuts and the cheese, and then we're going to put the olive oil on it. At this point, I'm going to put in some olive oil. That smells delish. All righty. Yeah, it does. So this is a pesto. We've done this before, but not exactly this recipe. And you can change this around to your liking. Now, you can come back if you want a little salt in there. Put a little pepper if you'd like. I already tasted it. It's pretty good. I can oh, eat that. It's amazing. Let me smell that in this one. I think it's pretty amazing. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, wow. Now, think about if you're not growing your own herbs and spices. It's so easy. In the spring, oh, yeah. go to Lowe's, wherever you want to buy your stuff. Go to your local garden shop, whatever. Grab you some. Put them outdoors and boom you're ready to go that's right all year long they just keep on giving there's also indoor growers that i'm looking at they have the waters right. and they have the uv lights that you can have basil tomatoes year round that'd be nice i'm looking at those it's nice all right so here we, oh man do you smell that i do smell it it's ready that's a beautiful ah. thing you can use that on chicken you can use that on fish you can use on whatever you want again spread that on a pizza put your little cheese on there boom yeah you're done all right, now let's bring the French cut rack of lamb over here. We'll scoot this stuff forward. You know what this reminds me of? Hmm. Sergio, the stinky farm dog. Oh. <laughs> he would love when we had lamb. He'd he smell did. us grilling and he'd come up and just look at us because these French cut rack of lambs come with a handle. That's right. <laughs> and when we got done, there was nothing but fat on it. We would hold it down and Sergio would He's, chew on it. You'd hold it for like all day with him. He loved it. Yes, he did. Okay, so this is very simple. And you're cutting off your own individual little slices here with a handle. Now look at that. Um, a beautiful cut of meat beautiful. right there. Now as sheep and lamb get more and more popular and more and more people find out the health benefits and how good this is, they're going to want to try it. This is the perfect entry level recipe. It's so easy, yes, it so is. delicious, and so good for you. We need our protein and this is a good way to get it. You know anytime we've had people over that haven't tried lamb, if you make this, Good point. They always love it. They're like, have we ever had anybody that didn't say, please get me another one and another one? Right. Do you remember the time the kids were here and they weren't so sure if they liked it or not and they ate 80? We had eight, yeah. 80. 80, 80 of these. <laughs> they just told you that so you'd make it so they yeah, could I eat think it all. They did. They were tricking me. That's right. And it turns out when you ask the kids what one of their favorite recipes is, is either leg of lamb or shank. Yes. which we do as an individual Christmas dinner. They want that it's every year. It's an individual portion that's really, really good. So that's another good entry-level lamb recipe. Look at that. Now, why are we doing two racks? Because Kelly hasn't had lunch yet. She's hungry, too. <laughs> She's going to eat one, and we'll eat the other one. Wow. Now, as we start, Raul used to tell me if something tastes good, and something else tastes good, don't be afraid to layer flavors. That's right. And so that's what I did. This is the recipe that I've used. You know what? Who's going to be mad? Hmm. I didn't give him our recipe. But you remember Michael and Sherry came over and that's right. Sherry never had lamb? She was afraid to even try it. She was afraid to try it. They both loved it. She did love it, didn't she? <laughs> so I'm going to start out with the cavenders. Now you can buy basil pesto. It's absolutely wonderful. But when it's fresh, can't beat this. It's it's absolutely out of control. You can't imagine the difference when it's fresh, fresh. So this is what you want them to look like. You don't want to glom it up. You don't want to, you know, mess your grill up completely. Yeah. But that's that's what they're going to look like. So earlier, we looked around the house to see what kind of sides we could have for dinner because that's what we do. This is probably an unusual show in the fact that we don't really put a whole lot of planning into our show per se because we are just living life and we like to try different foods right if we go to a restaurant and we find something we like by chance we'll try to recreate that at home we started talking about rams and lambs That's and right. sheep <laughs> and so we started thinking about french cut rack picked one Had up to have it. and that's where we're at today 
I looked around the house for sides. What did we find? Spaghetti squash. A spaghetti squash in Mac's bag. That's right. So tell us how you prepare that, Mrs. Farmer. Well, actually, you want to bake it. So we, I went inside, we cut that in half, and I've cleaned it out, got all the seeds out and all the stuff inside, almost like a pumpkin. And then we put olive oil on it, a little mm -hmm. bit of salt and pepper, and I flipped them over, threw them in a pan, on a pan actually, and put them in the oven at 425 for about 35, 40 minutes. Then we're going to let it set a while. Yeah. Now what happens when you scoop that out, it's very stringy, and it's a lot delicious. of people use this as a substitute for spaghetti. And it tastes good. Last night we had some of that. We it was did. really, really good. So let's get the rest of this rack of lamb seasoned and ready to go, Mrs. Farmer, because I'm ready to grill. Yay. Who doesn't like butter on broccoli? Love it. But let's take it one step further and make it even better. What are you going to do, Mrs. Farmer? All right, we're going to take the broccoli. We're going to dip it. I'm going to put a few at a time in here. And then you have some seasoned breadcrumbs that you're dipping them in. And then you're going to take a little salt and pepper and cheese on top, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to bake these in the oven for how long, you think? I would say 168 hours. OK, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah, I'd say 20 minutes. All right, maybe on 350. Let's we'll see what we get. It depends on how crunchy you want them. Put them cooked up a little bit. You know, we do this with oil sometimes, just oil and salt and pepper. If yeah. you want to go the healthy version. But we're, you know, we're going for tasty today. The butter's good. Kelly demanded butter. That's right. And I heard Darren's joining us for lunch. He heard what we were making, so he's gonna he's ah. making a special trip over. It's funny when the word lamb is said around here, kids appear. They do. Even we call them kids, they're all in their thirties. That's right. Salt and pepper. And we've already got our cheese out, maybe, so wow. why not Might put, it, put, some cheese. Why not put right. it to good use? What will happen when this is in the oven? I think it'll get mm. yummy. You know, I would drizzle a little olive oil over the top, too. Would you? We, yes, wouldn't you? I see no absolute problem Let's with that Let's roast them up all. a little bit. Now, we already got our squash going. That's we right. pop that in the oven. We think about everything coming out at the same time. Next time we turn around, we're going to the grill. Mm -hmm. We're going to pop those on. When we know these are almost done, Everything is going to come out together. We're going to take our spaghetti squash, our homemade marinara, which we've done before. That's if you right. want to take a look at that, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com is where we have all our recipes, That's Mrs. Right. Farmer. All right, let's pop that in and see what happens. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And, and we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brother. Got a frog in my throat. Well, the night he was born down on the river bank, said his mama took a big step drink, hull off, smacked the fog out of his pap. He can swim like a beaver before he could walk, chew and fit backer before he could talk. Said he cut his first tooth on an old steel trap. Take some muddy river water to quench his thirst. He'll eat anything won't eat him first. Walked on all forward with a bow in his back. Eat a lonesome critter when the cows call. River at lets out a bug curdling squall. I swear it'll make the hair stand up on your neck. His daddy was a riverboat gambler, just a passion too. His mom was an outcast Cherokee squaw and died. He was too. Raised in a cave by an old mama wildcat. Boy ain't got no name in there. Everybody calls him a river rat. Down, he had love on his mind looking around and the men and the women in the kids run for the life. Except for Almina Bottoms, partial to him. Bless the heart, she was ugly as sin. Or out there on the main street river that made her his wife. Now how been them sucker river cliffs? They say river rats still exist when the moon is full, he cries out for his mate. There's been several people went to look for him. Some of them ain't come back again. They said the river rat cut them all up for catfish bait. His daddy was a riverboat gambler just from passing through. His mom was an outcast Cherokee squaw and dad was too. Raised in a cave by an old mama wildcat. That boy ain't got no name and everybody calls him a river rat.
All right, we're gonna take our spaghetti squash. Those are perfect. Which I'm sure most of you had that when you peel this back. And we let it cool a little bit. Let That's it what cool makes it go easier. Bit. Oh, so good. Look what you got. You got, it's, it looks like noodles. See that? Isn't That's that beautiful? Yum. Isn't that wonderful? Look how that breaks up into the perfect noodle-like consistency. It does. Look in here at this. Wow. It isn't, isn't that so cool? It is neat how it does that. Last night, that's what we had for dinner. We did. Just made a little marinara sauce. Homemade. Easy to do. A little cheese on top of there. because we got, got a little got slice of spaghetti. Right here. little slice of spaghetti. And I wish, I wish, I really wish folks could smell what we got going on here. Oh, so good. Because it's absolutely beautiful, wonderful. Look what we've got. I almost don't want to eat it. It's too pretty. It is pretty. I'll eat it. Then. Where you do you just want to start? Watch. You know what? Let's pick our meat up by its handle. Lamb chop. I'll Grab do the little one. You're doing the little one? Yeah. Grab that. Oh, oh mom. Mm. That's mm. always delicious. Wow. There's only one thing television doesn't allow, and that's smell. Oh, wow. Let's try our pasta. It <laughs> looks like pasta. pasta. That's so there good. Go. Wow. And the broccoli. That's really fan. good too. I'm a fan. Mm. 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 Wow. Mm. You know what? That was absolutely delicious. Amazing. A lot of folks have been asking us though, when are you going to be somewhere for mm -hmm. an event? October the 20th, which is right around the corner. That's right. We're going to do a cast iron cowboy cooking seminar. Cowboy hats. It's also going to be Halloween. So if folks show up and they want to be there in their Halloween costume, we would not discourage that. that it's October 20th That's right. at Waveland. For more information, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. We're Mrs. Farmer. You can find what? You can find all our recipes. Gazillions. The gazillions and billions. Also, if you haven't noticed, we have a Facebook page. We do. And we'd love to talk to folks on there. But it's extremely difficult to get on there, Mrs. Farmer. How would you do that? You hit like. That's it. That's it. One action. Hit like. Be our Facebook friend. And you know what? It's time to turn the cameras off. Darren just showed up. Yeah, isn't that funny? He shows Kelly up when there's is lamb. is telling us to hurry so she can eat. That's right. Unbelievable. It is. Let's just eat it all ourselves. Let them watch us. How quick can we eat them? <laughs> so at this time, it's all about good times. Good friends. And I'm going to keep eating. Good eat. We'll see you next week on a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Mm. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.